All right, friends, you know for years now I've been calling your attention to the extremes of LGBT activism. And I've been saying that those on the radical left will always overplay their hand because of which there will be a pushback. And we're seeing it more and more and more with radical transgender activism where it is actually affecting others. It is actually hurting others. It is actually unfair to others. And it is getting a pushback from women in particular for good reason because they are the victims now of radical transgender activism. So if you didn't hear the news A transgender cyclist, so a man who identifies as a woman using the name Rachel McKinnon, continues to break records, continues to win competitions. So here the New York Post and many other outlets report, transgender cyclist Rachel McKinnon dominates, competitors raise questions. Last week at the Masters Track Cycling World Championships in Manchester, England, the 37-year-old Canadian first set a world record in qualifying for the 35 to 39 age category, 200-meter sprint, then went on to defend, quote, her, it's his, her title in the finals. So Sky News interviews Victoria Hood, who is a former cycling champion, and she said, it is not complicated. The science is there, and it says that it's unfair. The male body, which has been through male puberty, still retains its advantage. That doesn't go away. I have sympathy with them, meaning transgender individuals. They have the right to do sport, but not a right to go into any category that they want. So what does McKinnon say? He says that that Hood has, quote, an irrational fear of trans women and says this, by preventing trans women who are biological males from competing or requiring them to take medication, you're denying their human rights. McKinnon continues. All my medical records say female. Your medical records are false then. They've been falsified because you're not female. All my medical records say female. Why? Because you insist on it. Not because you're a biologically male or chromosomally male. Come on. My doctor treats me as a female person. Why? Because that's what the doctor is told to do. Not because you're a female person. My racing license says female. Why? Because that's the insanity of the current law. But people who oppose my existence still want to think of me as male. No, you are male. When it comes to sports in particular, Rachel McKinnon, I don't know your real name, but that's the name I'll call you. That's the name you've chosen. You're, you're self-deceived. You're not female biologically, and you shouldn't compete with other females biologically. If you want to live your life a certain way, that's between you and God. If you want to identify a certain way, that's between you and God. If you want to dress a certain way, if you want to get hormone treatments, if you want to get sex change surgery, that's between you and God. You answer to him, not to me. And I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. I am saying it is unfair to the women. <clears throat> Another competitor, Jennifer Wagner Asali, said this, it was an unfair race. I accepted that when I pinned on the number, and I tried to do my best to overcome the unfairness. I do feel that hard fought freedoms for women's sport are being eroded. If we continue to let this happen, there will be men's sports and co-ed sports, but there won't be any women's sports. But of course. You say, no, 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 but you see the testosterone level has to be lower, and they have to be a certain thing for a certain period of time. And Here, let, let's, let's demystify this. If, quote, Rachel, because again, I don't know his real name, if Rachel McKinnon was competing with biological men, Rachel McKinnon would not be setting world records. Rachel McKinnon would not be winning all the competitions. I can guarantee it. Look, there was a case with a runner at Franklin Pierce College, a man who identifies as a woman. And when he ran against men last year, what did he finish? Ninth or tenth out of a field of ten. Then he runs with the women and beats the women by a landslide, a substantial margin beats the women in Franklin Pierce's first running medal in women's sport. Well, of course, because it's a man running. You're, you're getting the one that should have won the gold medal. You know how much devotion and time and effort is put into being a, a top-level world-class athlete and the training, and you're pushing against equals. That's why they even have age brackets. Age brackets. Right? What, what, if, what if a 20-year-old said, I identify as 70, and I want to race with the 70-year-olds. And if you don't let me, you're depriving me of my human rights. No, you're depriving the 70-year-olds of the 70-year-old rights. Why do you think they have age classifications here so that more people can race in fair competition? So you put this biological male up against other biological males, he's not going to be breaking world records. He's not going to be sh- Why do you think they're shattering women's records? Because they are biological males. Let's demystify this. Well, science is... Yeah, well, the most recent scientific report on this actually indicated, yeah, that things are not fair to the women, that the so-called transgender... I say so-called, 
because they're identifying the other way now. So a, a trans woman athlete has an unfair advantage as a biological male. Look, my height, my bone structure, different things, even if I was on some hormones to reverse testosterone and, and whatever and to get me a certain place as a 64-year-old man, I am still different biologically than a 64-year-old biological woman, let alone someone that's engaging in athletic competition. It is not fair, not fair, not fair. So the woman that works so hard to, to get a gold medal, she ends up with a silver. That's a big difference. And, and the third-place finisher, that, that would have in the past gotten the bronze medal, so you, at least your medal would have gotten the bronze medal, now that person's out. They don't even medal because someone else pushed them away. And you have certain high school athletics where you've got two boys winning, so they got for gold and silver. And, and now the girl that would have been gold, she's now bronze, and the one that would have been silver doesn't medal, the one that would have been bronze doesn't medal. That is not fair. And again, what it leads to is what you call female erasure. There is a whole book written by radical feminists who I assure you would despise many of my views, many of my biblical views, and would consider me antiquated and patriarchal and primitive and so on. And yet, many of the points they make against transgender activism have incredible insight. Here you have these radical feminists, a book that I, that I bought for research and put it in my Jezebel book, Female Erasure, What You Need to Know About Gender Politics War on Women, the Female Sex and Human Rights, Basically, they're saying what we fought for all these years as women and, and our recognition as women and our rights as women and our distinctives as women is now being completely blurred. I mean, you have Bruce Jenner identifies as a woman and wins woman of the year for Glamour Magazine. I guess men can just be women better than women. And, and now you, you want to know how, how far things have gone and, and how, how much we've descended into cultural madness? In case you missed this, how about this? MaxiPad maker unveils gender inclusive labels to recognize trans men. <clears throat> you see, men can menstruate now too. Did you know that? You say, what? What happened? An evolutionary change? No, no. Women, biological women who still have their female plumbing, who identify as men. Well, now they're men who menstruate. No, they are not men who menstruate any more than they are men who give birth. No. They are women. They are females who identify as men. Fact, biological fact, chromosomal reality. We're not talking about someone intersex with biological and chromosomal abnormalities that doesn't fit neatly into a category. We're talking about a heterosexual biological chromosomal female who identifies as a male and gets her period as a male and, and says, well, now men menstruate. No, you are a female identifying as a male. But because of the complaint of a few trans activists, what has this company done? Well, here, <clears throat> a little revelation here. The people that use maxi pads, things from monthly periods, they are female. They are women because men don't menstruate. So what, what they do is they alienate all these women. Well, we don't want to have something female. This is for females. This is for females. <clears throat> Another headline. Always sanitary products accused of erasing biology after Venus symbol removed from packaging. Friends, this is cultural madness. I'm not mad at people. I'm, I'm distressed. I'm grieved. Just read the case now of, of a father of a seven-year-old and, and the mother, they're, so they're separated. And the mother says she, that, that the seven-year-old boy want to put them on, on, on hormone blockers to st or puberty blockers to stop the onset of puberty and then, and then hormones and, and then getting ready for sex change. The kid's seven years old. And the father says, no, that's my boy. The mother says, no, he identifies as a girl. And the court said, yeah, we back the mom. This is madness, friends, and it's happening on our watch. So once again, I am concerned about people like Rachel. Obviously, he's gone through a lot to get to the point where he is and meant through a lot of pain that I cannot possibly relate to. But I know that God's answer is not for him to be competing with other women. God's answer is for him to find wholeness from the inside out. And we want to get around someone like that and help them find wholeness from the inside out. And if they reject it and say, no, this is the best way for me to do it. Well, again, that's their choice. But don't impose it on everyone else. That's my issue. Don't impose it on everyone else. If you want to have limited competitions, an annual transgender competition where biological males who identify as female compete with one another and vice versa, and you want to do that, 
and you have a smaller limited games, whatever, that's more power to you. Do what you want to do, but do not impose it on others. Do not impose your struggles on others any more than if you have a blind person in your school that everyone has to walk around with their eyes closed and learn to read Braille. No, you accommodate that person in the midst of their struggles and handicap or disability as best as you can while letting everyone else function normally. This is simply not fair. End of subject as far as I'm concerned.